In this video lesson, we will talk about different forms of quadratic functions. They are all quadratic, but sometimes there are different ways of writing down the same type of formula. I'll show you what I mean. So far we've mostly looked at quadratic equations that are of the form, for example, y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1, or y equals 3x squared, or y equals 2x squared minus 5x, or y equals negative 7x squared plus 3. These are all written in what's called standard form. And again, they're quadratic because they have the x squareds. As I was saying, this is called standard form the standard form of a quadratic function. This is because we have an x squared. We may or may not have an x term with some sort of constant multiplied by it. And we may not have, we may or may not have a constant term. I'll show you what I mean. In general, we have y equals something times x squared plus something times x plus something. Usually you write this as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The only rule is that a cannot equal 0 because we need to have an x squared term for it to be quadratic. And that is standard form. Now let me show you a different form. y equals 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. This is called root form. Or we could have y equals x minus 1 times x plus 1. Notice that it is different from the standard form. We have x minus something times x minus something else rather than some sort of x squared plus some sort of x plus something. But really, this root form is pretty much the same as the standard form because we can FOIL out the x minus 2 times the x minus 3. So we get an x squared term there, minus 2x here, a minus 3x, and a plus 6. Negative 2 times negative 3 is plus 6. So when we simplify, we get x squared minus 5x, plus 6. This is in standard form. So we started with the root form, but it's really easy to end up with standard form again. Notice that they are di different indeed. Let's do another example. y equals x plus 1 times x minus 1. Again, we have x minus something times x minus something else. Really, we have x plus 1, but that's the same as x minus negative 1. And usually it's thought of as x minus something. So we can multiply this out just like before. We use FOIL. And we get an x squared term minus x plus x minus 1, or 1 times negative 1. This implies to x squared minus 1, which is again in standard form. So they're both the same thing, but one of them is in root form, which is factored, and the other is in standard form. It just has x squared and some x. In this case, there is no plain x, but that's allowed. And then some constant. So now let's move on to the final form of quadratic equations. It's called the vertex form. Here is an example of a quadratic equation in vertex form. x minus 1 all squared plus 2. Now, it might look kind of similar to root form, but there is a difference. And this difference is that we have a plus 2.
in root form, we just have x minus something times x minus something else. You can't have a plus any other constant or any x or anything for it to be root form. But if we're adding a constant, then it's in vertex form. So vertex form is something like x minus 1 squared, or it could be x plus 2 squared, or anything with x inside all squared plus a constant. Now this function that I just wrote was in vertex form and in root form at the same time. But that's for later. Let's take a look at how to convert vertex form into regular standard form. As before, we can just FOIL out and we get x squared minus x minus x and minus 1 times negative 1 is going to be plus 1 in the end. And this simplifies to x squared minus 2x plus 1. So our y, our function, it is equal to Just leave this down here so we can copy it. y equals to x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 2. We can't forget the plus 2 at the end because it's in the original function. And this simplifies to x squared minus 2x plus 3, which is again in standard form. So we've just converted vertex form to standard form. It's the same function, but written down two different ways. There's even a way to write this same equation down in root form, but we're going to leave that for another time. And I'm highlighting here that it's standard form. We have something times x squared plus something times x plus something. Thank you for watching this video lecture. I hope it helped.